Hello everyone and welcome to Vinyl Loft. Today on Vinyl Loft, I'm going to talk about two of my vinyl picks of the week. Because Emma's not here. Because her ransom went up. Her wife now wants 24 Half Moon Joe Louis. We may never see her again. Today is called After the Lights by The Saddest Landscape, which was released on Top Shelf Records in 2012. Now before we get into this record, I want to briefly talk about the Screamo revival in 2008 and 2009. Essentially, five or six bands, specifically Touche Amore, Pianos Become the Teeth, Defeater, Make Do and Mend, and La Dispute came to prominence in around 2008-2009, leading a little bit in 2010. And they brought with them a kind of honesty that had been lacking in the genre beforehand. The interesting thing here is that the Status Landscape, the band that we're talking about, they've been a band for years. They had releases coming out as early as 2003, 2004, maybe even earlier than that. So essentially what happened is that the Status Landscape, being a band that has always played with raw and honest emotions, I believe influenced these bands, specifically the Pianos Become the Teeth because the vocal styles are somewhat similar. The funny thing now is that people are starting to recognize the saddest landscape and listen to them more. The album I'm talking about now debuted at number 6 on the Billboard vinyl charts, or the vinyl sales charts, I'm not sure which. Now I just want to reiterate that this album, After the Lights by the Saddest Landscape, it is real emotion. It's not cookie cutter, packaged, made specifically for 13 year old kids who don't really have discerning musical taste. This is actual people who make virtually no money playing music that they love and talking about issues that they care deeply about. And you can hear it in every chord, every bass line, and every screamed chorus. Because of that, this album is really only for people who are looking for authentic emotion in their hardcore and screamo albums. Now like I said before, this album is very popular. The first pressing is gone, it's completely sold out. It was limited to a thousand copies. The first 100 copies were a pink and black pinwheel. The next 150 copies were on 180 gram black, which is what I got. The next 300 copies were orange vinyl with black on it. And the final 450 copies were on dark red vinyl. The album is already on its second pressing, which you can still pick up at the Top Shelf store. There'll be a link for that down below. The first 100 copies of the second press were half clear and half translucent red, and the final 400 copies of the second press were Coke bottle clear. I highly recommend this album if you are into scream or hardcore at all. If you want a real authentic experience, a real authentic emotional experience from an album, you definitely need to check this out. I can't recommend it higher than that. It's so good. The second album that I want to talk to you about is a split 12 inch done by The Deer Leap on one side and The World is a Beautiful Place and I Am No Longer Afraid to Die on the other side. It was released by Top Shelf Records in 2011. I actually purchased this record from the Top Shelf store at the exact same time that I pre-ordered the Saddest Landscape record that I just talked about. And because of that, I didn't actually get the vinyl until the Saddest Landscape record came out. So I was essentially waiting for like two or three months for this record to show up. And it finally came, and I was happy. I hadn't actually heard much music from either of these bands. I had heard a couple of songs from The World is a Beautiful Place on samplers here and there. I thought, okay, these guys are pretty good. Never heard of the Dear Leaf before. I didn't even check them out before I bought the album, so essentially it was a blind buy. Each band gets one side of the 12 inch, and each band decided to write four songs each for this split. Essentially, the Dear Leaf are a combination of post rock and indie rock, and the best way for me to describe that to you is just to name two bands and have you go look them up and figure it out for yourself. I'd say a nice summary of them is that they are early Appleseed cast mixed with Mugwai. So if you know those bands, you kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about. Um, there's also going to be a link below to go check out their band camp so you can hear some of the songs. I listen to this record a lot, especially the Deer Leap side. It is the A side, so you listen to it more often. It's just the way things go. They have a song on it called To Moscow and Quickly, and it instantly became one of my favorite songs. The vocal harmonies in it are fantastic, and the progression throughout the song is amazing. I highly suggest you check out that song specifically. Now this split is also really good because the two bands balance each other out very well. The World is a Beautiful Place functions as sort of the emo counterpoint to the Deer Leap, in that both bands draw influences from post-rock, but the main difference I find is that the Deer Leap use their vocals for harmonies, whereas the World is a Beautiful Place use vocals 
to convey emotion to the listener. The first pressing of the album was limited to 500 copies. The first 100 copies were pressed on mint green, the next 150 copies were pressed on dark opaque red, and the next and last 250 albums were pressed on white vinyl, which is what I got. I highly suggest picking up this album. Both sides of it are great. Both bands are great. Uh, like I said, the Dear Leap have the song to Moscow and Quickly. There's a couple of tracks on the The World is a Beautiful Place side that are fantastic as well. Once you start listening to this album, you're not going to be able to stop, at least for a few days, maybe even months, maybe even the rest of your life. It's pretty, it's pretty good. It's pretty great. Alright everybody, that's it for this episode of Vinyl Loft. Hope you enjoyed it. Please make sure to comment below or on our Tumblr, Facebook page, or on our Twitter accounts. Let us know what your vinyl picks of the week were, or if you have any suggestions for records that M and I should check out, just let me know. That said, I want to make sure that you follow us at Vinyloft, at TJ the Mute, and my still kidnapped co-host is at I'm a Gene. You can also like us on Facebook, follow us on Tumblr, or subscribe to us on YouTube. And since you're on YouTube right now, why don't you just do it? It's right there, it's so easy, it's one click. Just so you guys know, we're gonna have a special guest host come in on Monday to help talk about the new releases for that week. I'm not going to say who in order to build anticipation and inevitably disappoint you. But don't worry, it'll be good, it'll be fun times, it'll be laughing and stuff. Come on back, come on back on Monday and we'll hang out with the guest host. And if you're really interested in some of the music that I talked about today, just check below in the description, there are going to be links there for you to uh, search out the music, find the music, check it out, see if you like it. And as soon as the credits roll, you are officially 50 days away from Record Store Day.